Okay, I'm gonna do this as quick as possible because I saw this a little while ago and this is really, really late to the party, but I'm gonna go through it as quickly as possible. I wanna talk about Fantastic Beasts, like Harry Potter hasn't been talked about enough as is. But I do see that the Fantastic Beasts trilogy has gotten some criticism for not being as good as Harry Potter. It still isn't, but I still feel like there's some magic of its own kind. It's kind of similar to, in my opinion, The Hobbit. Whereas, though, in my opinion, I feel like the Hobbit trilogy is superior than the Lord of the Rings trilogy, not in terms of storytelling, but in terms of character. Like, I find the characters in the Hobbit trilogy much more interesting and complex than the ones uh, in the Lord of the Rings ones. Mainly, I, I use this for my main thing in terms of Middle-earth, Frodo versus Bilbo. Frodo was, I feel like, forced into that journey. He felt guilty, like... Uh, I don't know, I brought it this far, I guess I feel obligated to finish it. Whereas Bilbo was just given the option. Bil I feel like Frodo was forced into it, whereas Bilbo was reluctant, but still nonetheless chose it. He wasn't like forced into it. He, he As soon as he was given to him, he just immediately turned them down. Then he thought it over, and then did. He chose to turn them down, but still went anyway. He chose to do that. Frodo was forced to do that. And that's what, in my opinion, elevates The Hobbit over The Lord of the Rings. Just simply character like that. But something like Fantastic Beasts versus Harry Potter, the characters in Harry Potter on both character and storytelling is still more interesting and complex. Whether you like Harry Potter as a main character is a discussion of its own. But at the very least, I could get into his interactions with Ron and Hermione and Dumbledore and all the teachers and all the students. They all had unique conversations and they were all unique characters surrounding him. So at the very least, the world he inhibited and experienced was unique. And then we get Fantastic Beasts, which is just more like going back into the world, but with, with a group of, I will admit, pretty interesting characters, but... Not really unique in terms of, like, I could easily tell from looking at them, like, what each one does. No, no, I'm not going to do that. Whereas with, like, stuff like Hermione or Ron, you look at them and you instantly know, based on their looks and how they look, what their characters are like. I love that. But here in Fantastic Beasts, it's not the same. And the, I will admit, the, it still it rides off of the fact that it's not as good and not as developed as Harry Potter. That's its main critique, and that's what has been criticized the most about it. I actually saw the premiere of the first movie. I actually won tickets on a radio. I actually won tickets to go see the first one on a radio. My mom and I were just so freaking excited. And we, we saw the premiere in New York. So the first one has like a very special place in my heart just for that. So... And again, it still made a lot of people happy. At least the first one did. But the first one has a very special place in my heart, so there's no way I'm going to, like, cram and backlash that anytime soon. So I'm not going to criticize that one. But then we get to The Crimes of Grindelwald, and that's where I started to see more people get turned off about it. First film, at the very least, was, like, very pleasing and a nice, like spin-off of Harry Potter. It's like a one-off. You could go into it and get sucked in and enjoy it for what it was. A one-off. A spin-off. It was fine. It served its purpose. Well, initial purpose, I think. Then they started turning it into, like, again, like a Hobbit trilogy. With the first Hobbit movie, it felt like a movie of its own. It felt, it felt like more like Empire Strikes Back. It had a bit of a plot. It didn't necessarily need to have an entire plot, but it felt like the beginning of a plot. But even then, it still had, it felt like its own movie. That's what I liked about it. Whereas with the new Fantastic Beast movies, or at least the second one, it definitely didn't feel like that. It was more along the lines of The Mummy or Amazing Spider-Man 2, where they're trying to cram so much information in your face and set up the other sequels that they kind of forget to focus on the main plot as is. And if anything, I will, I will admit, I still like Crimes of Grindelwald. My main complaint, if anything, is for a movie essentially about Grindelwald and Dumbledore, they're not necessarily in it as much as I would like them to be. If anything, that's what got sucked me in too, because Jude Law was casted as a younger Dumbledore for that movie. That's what got me sucked into that one. 
And I will admit, it was disappointing also to see Johnny Depp leave the stage as um, Girl of Grindelwald for that sequel for um, Unset Trial, I will not mention. But I will, but I will admit, I was sad. But hearing Mads Mikkelsen, I will admit, that was a pretty interesting choice. So I was curious to see <clears throat> where they would take that. That was like the only real complaint of anything I can make. Like, I will admit, probably, I saw there was like a lot of deleted scenes too. So maybe had the better integrated scenes, like Creed is actually coming back to life and having like maybe explanations and more breathing rooms in terms of plot stuff it better explained. I feel like the movie instantly would have been better received. As is though, my main complaint is I feel like Grindelwald and Dumbledore should have had more screen time. That's about as much as I can complain. But I feel like they did improve upon that one with the Stu one, the, the Secrets of Dumbledore. And... If anything, I feel like um, that that's what really holds this movie together. I'll talk about the ending, though, because the ending is what really sells it for me in terms of why I should go see it or why should other people go see it, but whatever. I will admit, that's what we really liked about this movie. You feel the tension and the focus primarily on Dumbledore versus Grindelwald. It's kind of like, actually, ironically enough, like Xavier versus Magneto and the original X-Men trilogy. It's not a fisticuffs battle. It's more a battle, a battle of the mind where they're actually like playing a game of chess. It's kind of cool like that. They're moving their pawns, setting the game in motion for future events and the exciting battle that's happening or is soon to come anyway. So I'll admit, that was pretty cool and I like they got enough screen time to make it feel like I could feel their presence and see exactly what I wanted. If anything... That was the best part about this. That's what I really liked about it. If anything, I will say this. The visual effects, I feel like, were very mushy. Like, they needed to be re-rendered again. I don't know if it was just maybe the projector or something, but the creatures... I will admit, the new creatures they actually added in are actually not bad. That's what... But for a movie called Fantastic Beasts, only added in, like, what, three new ones? It's not really gonna cut it. To be fair, though, the first one, I feel like the main problem was maybe having too much beasts. Though, granted, I like the battle, I like the plot, sorry, of having, like, the quest beat to find all the beasts and put them back. Actually, it could have been a TV show, but whatever. It was fine for the first movie. Then they started not doing as much with the beasts later, but whatever. That's just another thing that's, I guess, it now considered to be um, just happening now in this trilogy but whatever and it was just a saga because it's probably gonna get a sequel at this point um and uh eddie redmayne returns as uh mr scamander we also get new ones like uh miss turner i believe her character's called she's apparently a professor at hogwarts i don't really think she was necessary in terms of the plot she feels more like a replacement for queenie and Tina, or surprisingly not in this movie as much as I want. If anything, I feel like that's like uh, that's like my real issue is that Queenie and Tina aren't in this movie as much as I would like them to be. Granted, they do like at least Queenie has enough screen time to warrant, and at least kind of makes sense as to why she would like not really be on screen that much, but still distant from her. From uh, Jacob because well she joined she started fighting for the other team so that makes sense, but Tina makes no freaking sense. Oh, she got promoted at her old job and just decided to stay there. I call bull crap on that. Like she was willing to travel with Newt, travel with them to Grindelwald. Why would she not join them on this freaking quest? Why would Dumbledore not ask like the New York place? Like, they were even in New York anyway. They could have just grabbed her there. I don't know. That's my real main issue of anything, but that's about as much as I can complain. And people were hitting hard on this movie again. I will say this. The only real complaints I have are the effects, which I thought were really mushy, really not rendered as smoothly as, like, say, the effects in, like, the previous Fantastic Beasts or even Harry Potter. Because even the effects in Harry Potter are looking much more better than in this movie. And that's still, like, freaking, like, even Chamber of Secrets, I feel like, has better effects than this. And that's freaking 20 years old now. Well, about to be, at least, for my account. Um, but... 
I will say this. I feel like the real enemy here is the editing. Say what you will about like Tina not have Tina Tina Quina not having enough screen time or like the Ezra Miller situation with Credence or not, whatever. But I will say this. The real enemy here is the editing. I feel like there was like a miscommunication in the editing room or something. Because usually some movies are either choppy, sloppy, dragged out, or too quick. Here, it's not even so sloppy or messy that it's like funny or weird. It's just, huh? Like some scenes are either too rushed or too dragged out. That's the really weird parts. Like, a lot of the, like, just, like, having Tina, Tina and Queen just side off as, like, a one-line exposition thing, that, I call bull crap on that, easily. Like, I feel like some scenes could easily be extended on, and some scenes could even be trimmed down. Like, the opening scene of which, um, um, Dumbledore talks with Grindelwald. I feel like that was nice, it just wasn't necessary to have in the final product. If anything, had there been, like, a director's cut, or if it had been, like, a deleted scene... I would have been fine with that. That's up. That if it was like including like a online director's cut, I would have been fine with that. But it wasn't really essential for the movie, at least the final product in terms of theatrical release wise. So if anything, that's the real complaint. If anything, I have about this new movie, and for the trilogy as a whole, I don't see the criticism it gets. If anything. Like this movie and like the trilogy itself, in my opinion, it's not as magical as Harry Potter. Like all the movies come, like any, pick any one of them, and it's not as good as any of them, I think. Except maybe the first one, but then again, they had a rocky start, so I'll give them credit there. But granted, you could pick any one of them, and I think even like, even I think the worst of Harry Potter has like probably has to offer better than what these movies get. But I feel like Harry Potter was an experience. You got to see that in theaters. And you grew up with that. And that's awesome. But these are characters you just heard reference and stuff. So you don't know them as much. And the characters you do know. Well, I want to get uh, see explore. Are the good parts about this stuff. But they're not focused on a lot. Or if anything. Over focused on if anything. That's how I feel like the main problems here. Or if anything. I feel like in terms of future. Like the in terms of like. I hear there's supposed to be two more on the way. If that's the case, make Dumbledore the main character, Grindelwald still be the villain, but have it be more Fisticoffs. Have, like, Dumbledore gone on a manhunt, lead, like, an expedition, and make, like, his own mini prelude to Order of the Phoenix and go on a manhunt to find Grindelwald. That could be interesting. And then we could finally get that battle, that epic final battle where he gets the Elder Wand. That would be freaking awesome. But... Like this move, this movie, I feel like it's just a perfect representation of the trilogy of Fantastic Beasts as a whole. It's not as magical as the Harry Potter movies, but I feel like it works with its own magic that's unique enough to warrant checking it out. You get complaints here and there, and if you're looking for like a nice film just to casually watch, you're probably not going to enjoy this. It's It'll probably confuse you a lot. I hear that a lot with Crimes of Grindelwald. If you did not like Crimes of Grindelwald, I highly doubt you're going to like this. Me, I enjoyed Crimes of Grindelwald, so I know I was going to enjoy this. Going in, I was expecting just a nice smooth time and seeing like another Fantastic Beast movie. I was on board for whatever happened. When I got, I was okay with it. I'm not going to complain and I'm not going to like praise it like it's the next masterpiece i just see it here as a nice little send up to an already okay trilogy if anything though i love the ending i really love it, it actually feels like it's almost like like for example queenie switched sides but then initially Somewhere down the line, in terms of like the election plot line, I don't, I didn't want to get into that stuff. That's a whole other thing. People complain about that. I'm not gonna talk about that here, though. I will admit, though, I really like the ending. Just the fact that Queenie and Jacob actually get married, and essentially, in my opinion, start. In my opinion, a pretty pivotal thing. I think elevates this movie to something unique, and that's actually having a nomad finally marry a magic.
perks of whatever. I don't even. A muggle? I, okay, you actually have a muggle marry a witch. That's like groundbreaking in terms of at the time. And what would eventually become the norm for something in Harry Potter. Since Hermione is descended from people with who have no magical abilities. And, um, and like people like Harry or other characters essentially who do have muggle parents are like, are like of mixed blood. It's interesting. And it allows them to have that abilities and explore that in the Harry Potter movie. So I've like seeing that, seeing that kind of introduced here and it is introduced in this like lukewarm way. But you feel like it's not essentially over, but it's kind of over for these characters. Like, Nude is happy. Jacob is happy. You don't need to see them anymore. I feel like their journeys are done here. And I'm fine with their journeys ending here. I feel like, if anything, it's a nice send-up to the characters we have. And that's what I like about it. It ties back to Harry Potter, in my opinion, in a cool way. And caps off this... Okay, Trilogy, on a surprisingly very happy, pleasing note, at least in terms of what I think. Though, in my opinion, if they're gonna do, like, like more films, in my opinion, have Dumbledore be the main lead, and just go straight for the gold, have him go hunt for Grindelwald. That's my main take on this, do that if you're gonna do more movies. But other than that, I don't see legit criticism for this movie. I mean, this movie has 47, 48 around its tomatoes. He's saying it's actually as bad as, like, Twilight. Freaking Twilight? It's as bad as that? No. It's not. And you're also telling me that it's bad, like, uh, let's say, Fast and Furious 9 has a higher score than this. Is that well-deserved? No, definitely not. Venom Let There Be Carnage is a higher score than this. I also call bull crap on that. Though, in my opinion, that was fun. But still, it was an enjoyably bad movie I could get into. This isn't so bad. It's good. It's just a good movie that's just not executed with the in the best way. And that's the best way you could put it. So... What I would give it, I'm going to give it 4 out of 5. And I'll essentially give that to the whole trilogy as a whole. The trilogy, I, I like. And this film, I don't see the criticism for it. It's basically another Morbius, where people are just coming down on a film, I feel like, for almost no reason, and just finally kick a movie while it's just getting up. I don't We don't essentially need that, especially with COVID still going around. But... Tell me, what are your thoughts? Am I like, am I like not seeing what makes this movie bad, or am I like, maybe I'm just the only guy who just probably sees Fantastic Beasts and just enjoys it for what it is? I don't know, but I'm fine with the trilogy as a whole. I have no legit complaints about this trilogy, nor this new movie as a whole. That's my take on it. Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments down below. Please like and subscribe, and hopefully I get post more soon. Take care.